This is definitely the most miserable heroine. Originally a happy woman her life was turned upside down when she was poisoned by the author. Her parents were killed by thieves her family's alchemy store was overrun and she was left unattended at an orphanage. Since then the heroine has stopped communicating with others and has been immersed in the sea of knowledge. On this day she saw an alchemist come to make a donation and was greatly touched. She excitedly went up to the other party and asked if she was rich after coming to become an alchemist. The other party did not hide anything and said that it would become much better than her current life and she could spend her life peacefully. The heroine is so excited that she wants to become an alchemist and have her own store like her parents. In order to obtain the alchemist's qualification certificate she specially came to the King's Capital Alchemist Incubator School. This is a school that only looks at ability regardless of origin and even commoners can get scholarships so there are a lot of people who come here and the competition is fierce. After arriving at the school the heroine spends her days either studying or working part-time. This day she saw a sign for an apprentice alchemist. As soon as the heroine walked into the store she met a beautiful master. Five years had passed and it was finally time for the graduation test. The master reminded the heroine that she must take this test seriously and make no mistakes. Maria could tell at a glance that the heroine had come to see the master specifically. After being told what was on her mind the heroine was so shy that she wanted to leave but was stopped by the master. Maria personally helped the heroine to design a hairstyle which will enhance her face value a lot. And the master encourages the heroine believing that she will be able to pass the test. The first one is a written test and the next one is a practical test. Meanwhile the teacher reminds them that no matter what accidents happen in the middle they have to solve it by themselves. After a few failures in a row it was finally the heroine's turn to take the stage. Her test topic was to make the ultimate potion using the materials in front of her. This was not challenging at all for the heroine as she often helped her master make these. After checking the materials the heroine realized that what was placed in front of her was fairy wood not the necessary material mosquito grass. The heroine guessed that this should be a trap. After quickly thinking over all the recipes the heroine realized that she couldn't find the corresponding materials at the time. She forced herself to calm down. Then the heroine suddenly thought of her master's words that fairywood could make superior potions but the success rate wasn't high. Thinking for a moment she went to quickly prepare all the materials. With just what the master taught her she put the materials in order and injected a large amount of magic power and a bottle of superior potion was made. Even the examiner was shocked not understanding why the heroine was taking such a risk. Only then did someone tell the examiner that the materials were put in by mistake. The heroine's wedding passed the exam and she got her alchemy license. To celebrate the heroine's success in the exam the master specially helped her celebrate. But the heroine is very puzzled obviously there are a few people's scores are better than her why the first place will be her. The master explained that those who ranked ahead of her were usually nobles and they had extra chances of getting extra marks. The heroine then expresses her desire to purchase the alchemy book. The master had told her that as an alchemist owning the complete alchemy book was essential as it contained almost all alchemy. However a set of the complete book of alchemy would cost 750 gold coins but the master had a way to purchase it for 500 gold coins. She told the heroine that if she saved up enough money before graduation she would be able to take advantage of this special price. The heroine proudly took out a bag full of gold coins to show that she was ready. Despite the master's offer to let the heroine help with some things the heroine decides to fend for herself and try to earn her own money. The master felt sorry for her but thought it was a good choice. She gives the heroine a pink bag as a gift a bag that has something in it to lighten the load. The master reassures the heroine to accept it, and says that this bag is the same thing she made for her as the necklace she made herself. With this bag the heroine is able to contain the alchemy power. When paying the bill the heroine very reluctantly took out all her belongings. Then the master brought the heroine to the school. The students were surprised and regretted not being friends with her earlier. Turns out the master is a super famous alchemist. There weren't many people there because it was graduation day. The master is a little nostalgic she used to have parties with her friends right after graduation. The heroine is left on her own because she has no friends. The master loves her so much that he promises to go back and throw one for her as well. While the heroine searches for a place to practice the master also wants to see the intelligence of the unused stores. She asked the heroine how much active capital she still had. The heroine awkwardly said that she had already run out of money even for food. So the master recommended arrested alchemist Nakagoya to her and the best part was that it only cost 10,000 to get access. She wanted the heroine to try to run it. And the reason why it's cheap is because the country expects there to be alchemists in the countryside as well. Only if you travel from the royal capital it would take a month even by carriage. The only good thing about it is that there is an abundance of alchemy materials that are easy to come by, and it's a good place to go for improving your skills even though there might be fewer people. The heroine was worried that she knew nothing about the business. 
The master thinks not to be nervous the first two books of the alchemy book of alchemy the heroine can do everything these things are already enough to satisfy the needs of ordinary people for the opening of a store is more than enough. The master said that even if she can make it she can't sell it. The master said she would buy all the ingredients from the neighborhood as long as she brought them to her regularly. Then the master helped the heroine make a decision with a bang. She reassured her that even if she failed to start her own business she could still come back. On the eve of her departure the master prepared a farewell gift. After a month of long-distance travel the heroine finally came to the destination the heart cannot help but look forward to up to belong to their own store looks like. But the truth told the heroine I did not expect this cheap alchemy store is so deserted but around it grows a lot of herbs the interior is not as dirty as she thought. The most crucial thing is that the alchemy-related equipment props are also not taken away. At this moment the heroine only felt very lucky. She also discovered that there were cleaning engravings in the room and just by injecting magic the aisles were immediately refreshed. There was also a field of herbs outside the store and a well that hadn't dried up. So she only needs minimal furniture to live. The heroine arrived at the village's furniture store and the clerk Loria was happy to see her curious as to where she was from and even more excited and envious when she learned that she was from the royal capital. The shopkeeper Loria was happy to see her curious about where she came from and was even more excited and envious to learn that she was from the kingdom and that she was from the kingdom. Loria was curious about the big city and wished the heroine would tell her more about it sometime. As payment she gives the heroine a discounted price and is willing to provide the van for free. The heroine declined the offer and put everything in the pink bag in front of her. Loria called out to a passing older sister and introduced her as someone who lived next door to the heroine and was a well-connected person in the village. The heroine is a very introverted person and doesn't know how to communicate. Then the older sister agreed to show the heroine around the village. The village has not had a goldsmith for a long time and her store was previously run by an old grandfather. Since injuring his back he was taken away by his family. Though the village is small potions for alchemy are still an indispensable thing. Because there were many gatherers going to the sea of baked trees nearby the heroine didn't have to worry about having no customers. She was first brought to the carpenter's store and after learning of the heroine's identity the carpenter's eyes were sharp. Even though he was an alchemist there was no way he could let her cut in line. At the elder sister's request the carpenter agreed to give the heroine a free bill. After all the other party was a girl younger than her own daughter it would be too humiliating if she didn't even get a moving gift. In the end the elder sister brought her to the village head's house. The girl didn't realize that she had almost become impolite. The village headman was very happy after all the goldsmiths are all super elite. As the village chief he welcomed the heroine very much. At noon the heroine was brought to the inn for dinner. The boss wife did not expect that the heroine would come to this remote place. The heroine thought that it was not that bad here the unattended herbs were growing in a good state which meant that the soil and water quality were good. And the wind here is more comfortable than the king's capital so she likes this village very much. The owner's wife generously treats her as a congratulations for moving. The others see that the heroine likes the place so they treat her to the specialties of the place. After a day of running around the heroine was physically and mentally exhausted and worried that she hadn't gotten along well with the villagers after all that bowl of bug cuisine was not something that anyone could normally try. She is very concerned about the eyes of others worrying that she has no way to win the trust of others. But she didn't expect the master to show up at the door the next day. The master said that it was himself who took three full days to come here. The heroine couldn't believe that she had traveled a month's journey and the master had only spent one-tenth of that time. She told the heroine that alchemists also needed to exercise their bodies or else they would be quite dangerous. If there is no channel to get their hands on alchemy materials they will have to go and defeat the demons themselves. The purpose of her trip was to teach the heroine the methods of combat, and she also helped her prepare her weapons. The master reassured her that even if she was beaten to death she could still heal her. After being beaten up by master for a whole day master takes out the meal prepared by Maria to entertain the heroine. The master was concerned about how she was feeling over here. The heroine feels like she can't do it all by herself and envies master for having Maria as a partner. She is very curious as to what master is doing here surely she can't just be helping herself to practice her sword skills. The master explained that she was here to set up a teleportation array. With the teleportation array if the heroine wants to sell anything she can teleport directly to the royal capital, and whatever she needs she can also ask the master to deliver it for her. After she was done master was ready to go back worried that Maria would miss her too much she asked if the heroine would be lonely. The master was heartbroken. The master was heartbroken and planned to take her back if she would cry. The first time I saw this was when I was a student at the University of California Berkeley and I was a student at the University of California Berkeley. But not long after the master left the heroine began to miss him. The next day the heroine found out that the master had been killed by the police and that he had been killed by the police and that he had been killed by the police. The next day the heroine found the village people gathered outside the store. 
The villagers decide to prioritize the store, and the villager who gave her the bug dish apologizes to her. Because the heroine said that she loved the village they were too happy to think of playing a joke on the heroine. As an amends they would help make a sturdy fence. After Loria heard about it she scolded them specifically, and worried about what to do if the heroine started to hate the village. Everyone loved the village so they were happy to have the heroine over. Even though they had just met she wanted to be friends with the heroine as well. In the blink of an eye everyone was busy until dark. The heroine invited Loria to stay the night. At night the two girls chatted about family matters. She said that because of the master she needed to do sword training and also exercise. But when the store opens she won't have the time so she hopes to hire a shopkeeper. Loria furtively suggests that she can come and help out. The family only goes out one day a month to stock the store so as long as she can get that day off it's no problem. The heroine was happy and she had finally found her partner. On this day the heroine's alchemy store finally opens. As the first patient of the official business it is the sick and dying person with poisoned burns and broken arms. While the heroine can save the patient she needs to spend a lot of money. The companions are very upset that they have to talk about money first in a time of crisis. Andrea tells them to shut up he knows the heroine is serious. As gatherers they will have to be ready to realize. The heroine offers two options one to just save their lives and one to heal them completely. Kate promised to make the payments and hopefully restore Alice to her original state. With that the heroine arranges for Lorea to take Kate to fetch water. She wants to know how the patient was injured. Andrea isn't sure they just happened to find an injured Alice. It was said that she was attacked by a bear whose body burned fiery flames and had four arms. The heroine knew that it was the demonic hellfire demon bear. The first thing she did was to attach Alice's arm and after dropping a dozen potions the arm was immediately restored to its original state with the appearance of a dazzling light. The next step was to detoxify the poison but Alice hadn't regained consciousness yet so the heroine simply chose to feed the medicine mouth to mouth. After this it was to recover her strength. Time waits for no one she asked Loria to prepare expensive potions her companions were once again dissatisfied calling the heroine a miser. Kate was even more disgruntled that Alice would be injured and it was all their fault for taking unauthorized action. The other argues that she's just not happy with the heroine's comment about putting her life on the scales. The heroine doesn't see a problem with that. The gatherers made their living by exchanging materials gained from their adventures for money and the alchemists made all sorts of things that people needed as well as the occasional rescue using it to charge for their lives. Andrea asked them if they would be willing to give away what they gained for free. After the heroine's rescue Alice managed to get out of danger. Kate was thankful that the heroine had come to her rescue she almost thought Alice was hopeless. The heroine worried that today's experience would be too exciting for Lorea. She did not think that an alchemist could do something like that. The heroine explains that it was her first time doing it in real life as well and thankfully Kate said she would pay for it, and if she had waived the cost of the treatment without authorization she would have messed up the rules and caused the business of alchemy to crumble. Lorea is curious as to what Kate would have done if she hadn't agreed to pay. The heroine was also in a difficult position, while she might have saved the cure as well she just couldn't afford to be soft in order to save more people. Lorea didn't understand. The heroine explains that because the material is not inexhaustible that's why there are monetary transactions, and that's why there is a balance between the two sides the alchemists and the gatherers. If the balance is destroyed by saving one person it would be undesirable and there would be no way to save more people. Lorea was happy to have grown today. After Alice awakens and thanks the heroine for saving her life the heroine says it wasn't free. After learning the exact cost Alice couldn't help but cry not realizing it was so expensive. Kate sees this and agrees to pay off the bill with her. The heroine reassured them that they could pay in installments, and she wanted to know where the location of Alice's attack was. After learning that it's not far from the village Loria worries that the village will be attacked as well. The heroine is also not at ease and decides to go and turn the magic bear into fodder. They decided to go along with the heroine in order to repay her for being alone. The heroine was hesitant but it was her first time out exploring and she did need help carrying the material. The heroine is only an alchemist but her strength is not low she defeated the demonic bear with a single kick and skillfully dismantled the bear. At the end the heroine removed the eyeballs of the demonic bear and then realized that it was not good. A few people rushed to find the village chief and reported that the demon bear might attack the village. Whenever there is a shortage of flame stones as a staple food the demon bears will lose their minds and start to lose control and this bloodshot eyeball is the precursor. This bloodshot eyeball is the precursor once the bears are out of control they will attack the nearby villages indiscriminately. She expects to be here in a week which is not enough time for them to seek support. The heroine promises to assist but there is only one hunter in the village who can fight and there is no money to pay for the help they want to hire. The girls promise to help and Andre will look for help from the gatherers. The heroines believe that if the village sticks together they can get through this. But all the gatherers in the neighborhood fled adding that it was all because the two men they were teamed up with were going around causing trouble and scaring people away. 
The villagers know that even if they flee they have nowhere to go, and their village can only be guarded by themselves. The heroine arranges for everyone to make a one-way fence first using the flame stones placed in advance to lure the demonic bears to a place where they will be eliminated together. The hunters within the village were responsible for observing the movements of the demons in the forest while the heroine was desperately trying to make potions in the past few days regardless of the cost. Only in case there's no way to get enough materials from the demonic bears the store will probably go out of business. But she was still willing to pay for the village. At this moment the call to action came from the village more than twenty demon bears were approaching. Kate keeps firing arrows from the tower while Alice and the villagers guard the bridge. Thanks to the heroine she was able to survive and this time she won't waste this life for nothing. The heroine told Loria to hide on the second floor and play the flute if something happens. The demonic bear that left the forest slowly moved towards the flaming stone. The villagers are nervous and make a noise attracting the attention of the demon bear. The heroine arrives at the critical moment and kills the bear with a single blow. Afterwards she ran and killed the bear. With the cooperation of all the people the bears are all driven in the same direction. But the sound created by the women's banging helped making the bears completely out of control and luckily Alice was able to strike in time. Soon all the attacking bears were killed. However a bigger bear suddenly appeared in the forest one that even the team might not be able to defeat. The heroine rushed up alone using her water ball as a shield to block the flames. The crowd is very worried but the strength of the heroine cannot say anything. At this moment the sound of a flute was heard in the distance and the heroine knew that Lorea was in danger. There are two demonic bears breaking into the store and in the moment of crisis the heroine once again appeared in time to cut off the bear's paws and resolve the crisis Loria was so happy to see that the heroine was fine. Since saving the village with her body enhancement the heroine is covered in sore muscles. But happily there were three girls taking care of the heroine at the same time. She asked Kate and Alice to stay here as well promising not to pay rent and take the money she saved and use it to pay off her debts. That way she can also get alchemy materials from the two as well as information that only gatherers can get. The heroine hopes that the two will become a force in the running of the store. At this time the heroine's store was made a big hole by the demons and some houses in the village were destroyed but they were all rented houses so the heroine was considered to be the most severely affected. But the heroine still intends to continue to open the business the more this time the more the practitioner of gold magic will be able to contribute. In order for the village to recover as quickly as possible she also wanted to help. The heroine thought of a discount program for gatherers as long as they hold the empty pill bottles that the store has used up to buy something they will get a discount. Because the most energy-consuming part of making primary medicine is making the bottles once they are recycled customers will definitely be happy although the profit will also be drastically reduced. Loria thought that the profit could be made up by other things. She looked aside at the fabric and realized that it was very expensive. The heroine explained that just this was already 30% cheaper than the king's capital. Once the alchemy fails it will be instantly worthless and if the alchemy of something worth millions fails it will be a huge loss. Therefore an alchemist can easily go bankrupt if she doesn't have some family money to back her up so she has to think of more ways to make money. The heroine found the village chief and wanted to discuss the distribution of the magic bears. She wanted to sell all the alchemy materials and separate the money for everyone. The village chief didn't think it was necessary after all she was the one who defeated a large portion of the magic bears. Instead he wanted the rest of the demon bear's skin and flesh to be used to sell and get enough money to split among everyone. The heroine was going to take the materials she obtained and sell them to the alchemists in the nearby towns. After saying hello you can buy and sell the materials you need. The nearest town to the village will take three days of tutorials but she can strengthen her body and return as soon as tomorrow morning. After asking Lorea to help guard her home the heroine set off. It had been a long time since she had been able to make it to the town which made the heroine excited. She hoped that one day she would be able to relax and drink tea with the girls. To do this she had to work hard to earn money to support her family. The heroine heard that there were two alchemy stores in the town. She first went to the one store that was close by. She thought that the material in her hand could be sold for at least 300,000 but the other party was a treacherous merchant who only failed to recognize the source of the material and kept on belittling the quality of the material and was only willing to offer 12,000 yuan. The woman was very unhappy and felt she was being belittled. But she decided to try her luck at another store. Nor the owner of this place has the opposite opinion of the material and is willing to offer 400,000 for it. She had heard that a nearby village had been attacked by demonic bears but seeing what was in front of her meant that the bears had been taken care of. She was surprised to hear that the heroine was Ophelia's disciple. No wonder the heroine is so powerful. She was willing to acquire all of the heroine's material. And she had all the material that the heroine wanted. She was glad that there were powerful alchemists that came here to exchange ideas. After a night's rest the heroine returned to the village early in the morning. The trip out had made her happy not only had she exchanged a large bag of campaign funds, but she had also met Nora a friendly alchemist. 
She had thought that everyone might still be sleeping but to her surprise Alice had gotten up early and started working out, and the others had fixed what they could. Loria suggested building a full kitchen while they were at it. After Alice and Kate stay everyone can eat together. The heroine thought it made sense and accepted the offer. The two then teamed up to retrieve the steel plate from the blacksmith. The innkeeper's wife was curious and asked the heroine what it was for. The hostess explained that it was material to be placed in the kitchen's magic furnace. The innkeeper's wife was envious of the fact that with a magic furnace there would be no need for fuel, and she could control the fire freely. She also wants to install a magic furnace but the price is too expensive. The boss lady understood after all won $150,000. The boss lady was shocked she heard the price is at least $200,000 to $300,000. The owner knew that it was the middleman who made the difference in price and it wouldn't have to be so expensive if she had been approached. She told the owner to take her time and think about it. Back in the store the heroine expended her energy on carving magic formations on the steel plates and fixing the magic crystals in the magic furnace. Finally she filled in the gaps with twigs and after applying paint to improve durability and waterproofness it was complete. At this time the owner's wife came to her door and decided to buy the magic furnace. She wanted to at once the amount of firewood her family's and used was staggering. When she thought about the cost involved in preserving firewood and the fact that with the magic guide stove she wouldn't have to chop wood she didn't think it was expensive. The heroine understood and promised to buy two and give her a ten discount. Soon the heroine helped the boss wife install the magic guide stove and the cook was satisfied after trying it out. The chef tried it out and was very satisfied. The boss lady kindly reminded her that installment is also possible. The boss wife told her not to worry she could afford to pay for it. And the village also gave out condolence money to the villagers. That being said that money would have been the heroine's as well. On the way back the heroine was surrounded by villagers who thanked her for stepping up for the village. They all thanked the heroine for stepping up for the village she was either exhausted or busy doing something else before and now she finally had a chance to thank her. At this point the store has been repaired and has a new look. The heroine gave a cooking book as a gift in order to. To test the functionality of the magic stove Kate offered to boil water just in time for tea. The heroine remembers that Nora also gave her quite a few treats. The three of them were cozy but the heroine felt like she forgot something important. Alice who had just finished washing up froze at the sight and shouted. I want a snack too. Kate reassures her that there's still some leftover snacks. But Alice discovers that Kate has a secret stash. After the incident with the magic furnace the heroine is very upset. Because after all this time she never found a chance to make money for the villagers and just relying on the adventurer community wasn't enough to keep the store running. Loria thought that the water extractor in front of her would be great. But this wasn't a consumable item she wanted to sell a bit of simpler goods out. The heroine thought that she could make insect-proof veils to sell to the villagers who were farming. So she needed the adventure girls to help her collect the main ingredient bad heart bugs. Alice said she would take care of it. Loria's cooking is getting more and more delicious and the heroine thinks it's time to add a freezer to make cooking more convenient if she can preserve the ingredients. Loria is surprised that she hasn't seen a freezer before. Loria was surprised she hadn't seen a freezer before the heroine told her not to worry she would take care of the expensive part. While the magic crystals needed for cooling were a bit hard to come by the ice attribute material would be easy requiring only the fangs of the ice-toothed bats that hunted the neighborhood. But none of the girls had heard of this kind of magic item and she hadn't seen any adventurers come to sell it. Andrea and the others seemed to have heard of it this bat inhabited the northern freezes but they had never hunted it. The heroine wondered if this kind of magical creature was not only easy to kill but the material was also easy to obtain. Andrea heard that some people had gone forward to the southern town to sell bats only to be kept undercut by the shopkeepers which made her realize that those people might have been cheated. The heroine knew this all too well as she had encountered such cunning shopkeepers. Therefore they can only rely on themselves to harvest the material. These bats can freeze their targets by lending their bite but they usually don't attack humans and are not vicious in nature so they are good for hunting. The heroine wants to participate herself for the sake of her fangs. A few people came to the north cave vault. She reminds the bats that they will prioritize escape when they are attacked but if the escape route is blocked they will fight back desperately and many adventurers have been killed by freezing their whole body because of it. Several people soon smell a foul odor as the bats usually dangle at the top so a lot of stuff will fall down. They step on the feces on the ground and realize what a lot of the stuff is. But the heroine would use a magical barrier to help them keep the foreign objects away and also had medicine for everyone to reduce the stench. However this would only prevent the stench to a certain extent after all the total elimination method would be much more dangerous. Soon they found bat ice teeth hanging overhead. The value of ice teeth lies in the strength of the freezing ability. Those under 5 years old are almost worthless generally the deeper the cave the older the individual bats are and their fangs will have veins similar to annual rings which can also be separated. And the colder the bat's body temperature the more valuable it is. 
Alice wanted to make sure to take a look but the heroine had been more or less worried that her hand would freeze in necros after being pierced by the fangs. Alice was so shocked that she backed up and turned around and saw the frozen bones again. Waiting for the crowd to come back to their senses they realized that more bats had appeared densely overhead. Eyeing the size of the bats overhead was large only. The heroine arranged for herself and the archers to strike first making sure to kill the bats with one blow in order to avoid waking them up. In case the bats are awakened it is necessary to approach the battle adventurers on the field. Unsurprisingly the bats are still all woken up. Shirasco released an air barrier to isolate the bats. Quickly a few of them combined their efforts to kill a large pack. The heroine reminded them to always wear gloves when recovering the fangs. When everyone saw her smooth movements they were worried that her thin gloves were unreliable, but they didn't know that they were soft hands specially made for her, and they wouldn't be damaged if they were slightly cut. Andrea tried them out and they felt great. And the price of $4,000 for a pair was a good deal, and if you bought more she could even give you a discount. But most of the residents of the village are not very willing to change the economic structure which is very difficult for changing the economic structure. To solve this problem she comes up with expensive incentives for people to provide good ideas. In this way she hopes to stimulate everyone's creativity so that the village's economy can improve. The root cause of cash not circulating is because of poverty. If you want money to circulate you need to do business with people outside the village. Alice thought that the heroine could entrust the villagers to do some work. Loria thought that the only people that the heroine could entrust were the furniture store and the blacksmith's store. Kate suddenly thought that the villagers could be asked to make hats such as cool hats with a cooling function. Before this was just ordinary hats now it could be outsourced to the villagers to make them. When the hats become popular in the village they can also have Loria's father sell them in other towns. After the heroine found the village chief she told him about her proposal. She suggested that the villagers make the hats at their own expense and price them. She also proposes to add a cooling feature to the hats and add an additional fee to the villagers' pricing. The village chief is worried that if they don't sell the villagers will lose money. But the daughter believed that the heroine must have gone through a lot of consideration before making this suggestion after all she had spent more on alchemy and would only lose more if she couldn't sell it. If she can't sell it she'll only lose more since she's willing to take a bigger risk there's no reason why the village won't support her. In this way the heroine managed to drive the village's GDP with her own efforts. Nowadays even traders from other towns are willing to come and talk business. Kate and Alice brought precious materials and intelligence saying that raw materials could be collected from the lake to the east. These raw materials are so valuable that they should be able to pay off their debts and also have the potential to become the village's specialty product. But the heroine showed little interest in this because the only thing that can be used as an alchemy material by the round thread shells are the male gonads. It was difficult for an outsider to judge the gender and the collection was inefficient. Therefore she didn't recommend collecting it, and the two were greatly disappointed they had thought it was a good opportunity. Lorea was also interested in this as well as the cookbook given by the master of the female lead had recipes for round thread shells. When she hears this she immediately changes her mind. The hostess is a good boss and closes the store specifically to take everyone out for the day. Seeing Lorea take a big box the heroine tries to help her put it in her bag but Lorea refuses and wants to take it herself. The girls wonder why none of the villagers are going to the lake. With the appearance of the demon they know the answer. It's easy to get killed trying to get in and out of the forest without some strength. On the way to the lake several people also found a sea of flowers. Loria looked at the flowers on the ground and thought they were cute ready to admire them. But in the next second the flower turned into a demon and stung her. The girls were ready to start working immediately after arriving at the lake but their stomachs were hungry. It just so happened that Loria had prepared an exquisite bento and even the small animals in the neighborhood were attracted to it. After eating and drinking Alice tries to take a break and suddenly a fork is stuck in the ground and Kate threatens to stick it in her next time. Loria on the other hand was curious thinking that the round thread shells had gems inside. Actually it does have to be refined into gems with other expensive materials just like the gems on the necklace she wears which is made by alchemy only it is very expensive. Looking at the two playing in the lake Loria showed a look of longing. The heroine suggested for her to try the water as well and took out the cute swimsuit she prepared in advance. The two of them are not the only ones in the world but they are the only ones in the world who are not in the world and they are the only ones who are not in the world. The first time you learn how to swim you're going to be in a mess right. The heroine handed Loria a flotation board which was supposed to be a life-saving tool for Alice and Kate who were worried about drowning and with this Loria was able to concentrate on her footwork. It didn't take long for her to feel like she was about to get the hang of it. The heroine admired her concentration and because of that it made her like Loria. She told her to stand still and that she herself would swim to her side on a float. She then cheered Loria on from the shore. The heroine was happy that she finally did it. At this time Kate Alice had also collected a lot of materials, but a red light suddenly appeared behind them. 
A large, disgusting worm drilled out of the lake the heroine knew about this creature but it was the first time she had seen it. The worm swatted its tail at several people Alice's hands shook the materials did not hold steady the worm found the opportunity to eat a bite. She was very upset and drew her sword to slash but the worm's surface would secrete mucus so the attack was ineffective. The heroine used magic to freeze the worm's head and soon the worm broke free from the ice and then opened its own skills. The heroine can only attack with all her might. Facing the oncoming worm the heroine was ready to give it one last blow but the pendant around her neck suddenly broke. She directly casts a super strong tornado. After the worm is killed the heroine explains that she usually relies on the pendant to suppress herself as her magic is slightly stronger than normal, and luckily it didn't hurt them this time. The three of them all agree that if it wasn't for the heroine this time they would have all died here. Also because of her tornado all the alchemy materials in the lake washed ashore. The opportunity was rare and Loria was ready to let everyone taste the freshest flavor. To say that they were still awesome they even dared to eat the flesh of worms. If you were here would you dare to eat it? Looking at the broken pendant the heroine was very distressed. Because it was specially made for her by her master the material is very special if she wants to repair it she can only go to trouble the beautiful master. She is going to use the teleportation array to send a letter to the master. The youngest partner suggested to send some specialties of this place by the way there are still a lot of meat of the big worms killed before. But the heroine didn't know what to write on the letter after all it was the first gift from the master and she needed to properly explain the reason why the chain broke. The heroine knew that she could not have become an alchemist without the pendant. When she was ten years old the heroine happened to see a job posting outside the master's store. After entering the house she found two great beauties inside. She made it known that she wanted to work in the store. If she didn't work she would have trouble making ends meet. About the topic out of the door although the school only teaches three points but in the extracurricular book she knows that there are other two points to pay attention to. Maria stopped the heroine's narrative and asked her to answer the topic at hand. Finally the master checked and found that she had answered all of them correctly and decided to hire the heroine on the spot. She was then taken to the workroom by the master. When asked if she had any experience related to alchemy she confessed not at all. But at school she was a learner and it would definitely come in handy later on. The master felt that it didn't matter if she had no experience it was even just right for her. It would be better to try it once before explaining exactly why. So she told the heroine to take the alchemy furnace on the side and try to inject her magic into it. While the heroine had theoretical knowledge it was her first time practicing alchemy. While internally admonishing herself to be cautious and cautious accidents still occurred. As the heroine injected her magic the alchemy furnace directly exploded the heroine caused a commotion but also beyond the master's expectations. At this moment the workroom was all frozen if not for the master preparing a defense in advance she might have been frozen to death as well. The master could see that the heroine's magic power was thick but she was not yet able to control it. However the magic power that surpassed normal people would be her greatest advantage. Because of this it was also quite dangerous and the slightest mistake could result in casualties. This time it's fortunate that she's around in case the heroine does the same thing at school the best outcome would be to have her magic sealed and expelled from the school. The heroine can't accept that being an orphan she has to become an alchemist in order to repay those who have helped her. Then the master customized the pendant specifically for her to limit her magic power. For this reason the heroine has to work for her until she graduates with her salary paid of course. This is how the heroine stayed by the master's side. Thus the pendant represents the deep bond between her and the master. Time back to the present the heroine has just prepared the magic array for the teleportation Alice did not hold the package steady the worm's flesh is more slippery than the mudskipper. The heroine told everyone to stay away from the teleportation array no one knew what would happen if they were caught in it. Alice continues to be a daredevil accidentally stepping on the slime and almost slipping into the formation. The heroine in order to save him accidentally hangs the pendant into the teleportation array and is teleported to the royal capital along with it. The girl's mother is a very good friend to him, but she is not a good friend to him so she is a good friend to him. The girl didn't blame her. She guessed that the pendant should be in the hands of the master even if the master found the anomaly want to come over to repair ordinary people at least a month time. While there is no pendant it does not affect the operation of the store. She believes that with more attention there will be no problem however things are not so simple. The heroine for a moment unable to adapt to the huge magic power alchemy after alchemy ended in failure. At this moment the master's side realized that repairing one side of the teleportation array alone was useless. Maria this is ready to go to help her pack her bags knowing that she is going to find the baby apprentice. The master spat to say also Maria most heartbroken heroine. Master spit in the end it was Maria who told her to take the heroine as her disciple which she hadn't initially intended to do. While she was surprised by the heroine's amazing magical powers that was all. Only that since taking the heroine as her disciple the heroine brought back the freshness of her initial confrontation with the alchemist. For this the master was grateful to Maria. 
Maria humbly stated that she was only giving advice by intuition but her intuition was like an apocalypse. However the real apocalypse might have appeared when the heroine first set foot in the store. If the heroine hadn't come in at that time her magic must have gotten out of control leading to her dismissal and perhaps killing the possibility of becoming an alchemist. Therefore it was as if the two sides had met by fate. And at this moment the heroine has locked herself up for three days because she can't control her magic power well. She is very frustrated if she continues like this she can only go and ask her master for help. But she is worried that the pendant will be transported to another place. Just as the heroine wanted to go out for some air she came face to face with the master. The master returned the repaired pendant to the heroine. She wants the heroine not to worry too much and to come to her directly if she has any difficulties. The heroine wanted to become a good alchemist as soon as possible and did not want to trouble her master if she had problems. Thinking back to the first time she knew when the heroine's parents were killed by thieves she said that her parents had a very good store where both the customers and the employees put on a smile. Therefore she dreamed that she could become a good alchemist as soon as possible and afterward own a store just like her parents. Master could understand her thoughts as she was once the same. With the cooperation of master and disciple the teleportation array was quickly repaired. The three girls waited in the hall for the whole night and when they saw the heroine appear they immediately came forward to show their concern. This scene makes the master very happy for her, and this is the store of her dreams. This day the heroine suddenly got the news that a mysterious merchant appeared in the village, and the other party snapped up the ice tooth bat's fangs at a price ten higher than hers. Nowadays except for their regular customers everyone goes there to sell their materials. The heroine understands that people go to other places to sell materials but she is angry that the other party has no courtesy, and reaches out to her territory without even saying hello. Seeing the hard-to-establish cool hat industry suffer she can't just sit back and do nothing. Not only that Andrea also found out that the other party and a group of robbers have collusion. Everyone starts to worry that the bandits will attack the village. Afterwards several people discuss what to do about the merchants. The heroine who had already purchased Icy Tooth at a higher price worried that if she purchased it at a higher price than the other party it would result in a loss. She estimated that there was probably still a profit to be made but if she sold it to the royal capital she was bound to lose money considering the cost of traveling. A few people were puzzled by the merchant's purpose. Kate suddenly suggests that it might be to seek revenge. While the heroine doesn't remember having a grudge against anyone sometimes even if you don't do anything you can still hold a grudge. Besides the heroine there was also Loria's father who could also be held a grudge. Loria starts to get nervous that her father did make the store much better because of the cool hats and worries that her father will be attacked by bandits because of this. She confesses that her own grandparents were killed by bandits. The heroine reassures her that she doesn't have to worry about accidents with her but just in case it's best not to leave the village for a while. She thinks back to her parents who were killed by the bandits, and is confident that if the bandits dare to show up she will be punished. And targeting the new merchants she decided to raise the purchase price so that as long as the alchemy doesn't fail again in the future she won't lose money. But once it fails once the profit of dozens of cool hats will be wasted. But she was confident that she wouldn't fail after all she was Ophelia's apprentice. The two were surprised they knew that Ophelia was a master who stood at the top of the alchemy pyramid, and even at the top she was a crane-like existence. Therefore even amongst the laymen she was a very admired existence. She was prepared to raise the price to the same as a merchant, and if the other party wasn't going to give up she would have to go and hunt for the material herself, and then sell it all to the other party. As long as the other side didn't have a lot of cash the money chain would definitely be short. She would have to see if the other side had more money, or if there were more bats in the bat cave. The woman raised the price soon after the other side increased the price by 50 and said that the business rivals everywhere and the rivals seemed to be beginning to eat it. The heroine realized that the other party's goal was their own she did not panic decided to personally participate in the hunting material and then sold to the opposite side. To prevent her opponent from noticing the anomaly she deliberately dresses down. With the help of the heroine the team quickly hunted a large bag of material. The teammates complained that she seemed to be enjoying the role playing. The heroine explained that she was there to punish unruly merchants. Her family motto was to be honest in business but her parents were killed by bandits. Even if she was unfortunate in the past it doesn't mean she has to live an unfortunate life in the future. Since she has her own store now she wants to do business as honestly as her parents. Afterwards they heard about how anxious the other party seemed to be yelling that the heroine's store was surprisingly still there and that the other party had left several times recently by carriage. The heroine guessed that they should have taken out the material to sell which means that the other party funds are no longer available and this village material want to take out to sell if the nearest is the south of the town, and the alchemist there happens to be an acquaintance she has contacted in advance to help pressure the price. They are very admiring of this the heroine is so small but so capable. They are very impressed with the fact that the heroine is so young and so capable the heroine is upset that she can still grow up, and says that she can let them use her breasts to pay off the debt. 
but she has no intention of using unnatural methods to change her body shape. The next day the heroine traveled to the southern town to see Nora the alchemist to discuss about the merchants in the village. The other party did find Nora to offer ice tooth material obviously the market price dropped very much but the other party still insisted on selling it judging from the situation they should be almost driven to desperation. She investigated the merchant in passing and gained quite a bit of information. The other party also runs a chamber of commerce in this town and their goods are all alchemy products and potions. But ordinary people selling potions would have to take a huge risk in terms of quality. Nora investigated and learned that he had many alchemists who owed him money working for him, and it seemed that everyone was framed by him. Despite his bad behavior there is nothing wrong with him on the surface which is why he's able to keep getting away with it. To make things even trickier he also hires thieves to terrorize the alchemists who fall for it, and all of them are young people like the heroine. The heroine realizes that the other side also wants her to be in debt only to fail this time. On the way back the heroine was ambushed by the thieves. In their eyes alchemists without guards are captives. The heroine was angry that the thieves didn't understand how much the alchemist had paid and how hard she had worked for two, five years. The father once said that the robbers would only take away what others had worked so hard to acquire and in order to prevent others from falling into misfortune they would never let them go once they encountered them. So the heroine didn't hold back and easily took care of all the thieves. The merchant's plan to bankrupt the heroine and put her in debt was all in vain. On the contrary his own funds are broken and in a crisis, he can only ask the heroine to buy the backlog of inventory. In the end the heroine to buy the other side of the material at a very low price a big profit. The weather is getting colder and the sales of the summer pop-up cool hats are plummeting. The girls know that being a boss is really hard. Loria knows that the heroine has correspondence with the alchemist in the next town. To help she could ask her father to go there a few more times and help deliver the letters but the heroine already had a good solution to the problem of delivering letters. She took out a small pink square and simply injected magic into it, and soon the voice of the alchemist Nora came from the box. The companion thought it was amazing and thought this would be great to sell in the store. The heroine said it was a bit difficult to realize after all her standard selling price was going to be $500,000. Loria missed holding it in her panic but luckily Alice swooped in and caught it. She breathed a sigh of relief almost about to become the third person in debt. This thing is not only expensive but it also requires magic stones for ordinary people to use so the average person can't afford the cost so the store needs more convenient everyday items to make it work. The girls wanted to know if there were any materials that needed to be gathered that could help the store as well as pay off the debt just like the icy toothed bat. The heroine says with difficulty that there are nearby but that kind of material is surrounded by powerful magical creatures that guard it. It's almost winter and she feels that the demand for flame stones will definitely increase but the only thing nearby is from hell flame grizzly bears but it's also dangerous for them. The only thing left that fit the bill was the honey of the rotting fruit bees. The bees as their name suggests feed mainly on rotten fruits and there were such bees infested near the icy tooth bat habitat. So there must be nests right near the bat caves. The girls were worried about whether it would be dangerous or not but the value of the material that everyone could gather wouldn't be so high. The heroine thinks that as long as they bring their insect-proof veils there shouldn't be a problem. The antidote is also essential. In order to pay off their debts the girls decide to go ahead and collect honey. And in order to boost their turnover the heroine has to hone her alchemy skills. This time she is going to try to make a floating cloak. There's nothing that can't be refined by throwing it into a pot and stirring it around. At this point the gathering team spotted the bees but the bees quickly disappeared from sight. Just as the crowd was searching in vain Alice accidentally tripped and fell and the veil flew under the tree. When he picks up the insect-proof veil he accidentally finds honey. At this point the heroine also refined the cloak and Loria became the first to experience it. While the cloak is ready the price of 100,000 makes her find it hard to sell it to the villagers. Loria thought instead that it might be a good seller. When she did the reception she realized that none of the gatherers seemed to know anything about the store's merchandise after all even Kate and Alice who lived together knew nothing about it. She suggested that the merchandise could be displayed outside the store. The heroine was surprised not realizing that Loria was so considerate of the store. It didn't take long for Alice and Kate to return with a full load of honey they had collected. Kate however rushed straight to the bathroom. While she thought that Kate just had a bad stomach the heroine thought of other possibilities and asked if they had eaten wild honey. Seeing Alice admit that they didn't resist tasting some the heroine is worried. She explains that this honey is poisonous and should not be eaten directly. It was precisely because it was poisonous and there was no fear of being targeted by other demons that she suggested collecting it. Thankfully they didn't eat much not enough to be fatal except that they would have to live in the toilet for a short period of time. Just after the words were said Alice came to her senses. But at the moment the toilet was already occupied by Kate and the heroine silently handed over a hole there was only so much they could do. It just so happened that the backyard wouldn't be seen and could be settled. 
she was helpless against the unexpected. While there are potions that can cure poisons the ones in the store have effects on all kinds of poisons so they are expensive. They had managed to make some money this time and after using this kind of medicine they would immediately go into debt again. So she prepared to urgently make a specialized antidote to poison the main ingredient being this green bug. To be on the safe side she asked Loria to help catch a few dozen of them first. This pot of worms will you have a numb scalp. Because of the time constraints she didn't have time to slowly break it down and could only use the mill to directly grind it into liquid. By this time Kate and Alice's bodies were already deflated. The heroine quickly made the antidote potion she first took out the expensive potion stating that after using it the debt would increase dramatically. So she prepared affordable potions just for them. But when they opened the corks an indescribable smell wafted out. The heroine told them not to think too much and just drink it all in one gulp. The two sisters are humbling each other wanting the other to drink first. The heroine reminded them that if they continued to put it off their stomachs would be upset again, and then someone would have to go to the backyard to fix it. Seeing this Alice hurriedly drank the potion down. Only the taste almost made her choke. Then it was Kate's turn who tried to sneak in an expensive drink, and was stopped by Alice. Alice didn't allow only herself to get hurt and force-fed Kate the medicine. Kate is disgruntled she is definitely being malicious and vindictive. At this point Alice's stomach starts to get upset again, and Kate quickly follows suit, wanting the medicine to take effect for another hour. This time Alice didn't want to go back to the backyard to fix it anyway. When they were done two strange men and women suddenly appeared in the store. They were Kate's mom and Alice's dad. They have come to borrow money from the two men who also have a huge debt in their family, and need Alice to marry the man she is being married to to pay off the debt. This day in order to investigate the cause of the below flame grizzly bear rampage the heroine and her party went to the magic bear habitat only to find that the place has been taken over by the more difficult pseudo fire salamander. Then the entire mountain began to shake violently and the ground cracked in its wake. She arrives outside the huge hole that has just appeared and realizes that there is an even stronger magical beast inside the fire salamander. The heroine suggests retreating before the other one shoots flames. But before they could retreat the fire salamander immediately sprayed flames at the crowd and the heroine hurriedly released an air barrier to block the flames in front of her. The heroine quickly releases an air barrier to block the flames from her body while the salamander is breathing everyone escapes. Afterward the girls were still scared. While they couldn't see it clearly they could determine that the fire salamander's physique was definitely beyond normal size. The heroine was fuming with thought at the moment she seemed to have a solution to Alice's family's debt problem only it might be dangerous. They knew that the heroine was hitting on the fire salamander, and by obtaining the material from it they would be able to come up with the money to pay off the debt. The buyer could also ask the master to help find it the heroine would not let Alice and Kate hunt it on their own that would be like sending them to their deaths. She would step in to help but she would also need the assistance of the two. About the way to defeat the fire salamander she has an ultimate trick like a jutsu. The master was also concerned after hearing about the fire salamander in case it went berserk it would cause the surrounding ecology to collapse and if it caused a volcanic eruption the nearby villages would not be able to handle it at all. The master concluded that the earthquake on the heroine's side and the previous damage to the teleportation array were all caused by the fire salamander. She believes that as long as the heroine works hard ordinary magical beasts can be dealt with. The heroine came to be confident and from today they made preparations. To defeat the fire salamander you must have defense that can withstand the heat. Alice and Kate were in charge of collecting the animal skins for the lining. Besides that she would also make the frozen sword and frozen stone. If the materials were not enough they could also rely on their contacts to get Nora's help in transferring the goods and when the two came back with the beasts they would be able to finish the rest of the defenses. In the meantime the volcano map that the master helped prepare and the magic crystal materials that Nora provided were delivered. Two weeks later all the preparations were ready. In order to treat the heroine Loria thoughtfully prepared a dish spicy deer head. On the day of the operation the heroine asked her friends to help carry her luggage, but there was not enough defense so she just needed them to follow her halfway. In the meantime Loria is in charge of waiting at home on a daily basis. On the way the earthquake happened again and the tremor was more intense. The heroine checked the map and found the best route to travel. The master has been guarding in the dark because he is worried. After most of the month when the guys came back again they found that the number of pseudo-fire salamanders had increased greatly. He sensed from the depths of the cave a very powerful fluctuation of magical power. The girls were nervous that an opponent they would normally find troublesome would have to take the initiative to face today, though they have to rely on the heroine to do so. She told Alice not to worry about it after helping her pay off the family's debt they could then focus on paying off their own money. Before they even got deeper into the cave the temperature was already climbing higher, and the group had to face cave collapses every now and then. In fact the girls were actually scared after all it was the first time they had faced this level of battle. She told the girls not to fight just to buy her time and support and cover. Though she was also scared she preferred not to part with her favorite people again. 
Soon the girls came to the depths of the cave and a lava lake appeared in front of them a fire salamander was swimming in it. The three of them held their equipment steady and stood at attention. The heroine looked at the pendant in her hand that suppressed her magic her stance was similar to the one she used to kill the earth dragon by the lake but this time besides taking time to activate the magic it would also use up all her magic. Once unleashed she herself would be unable to move which was why she needed their help. She didn't forget to remind the girls that it's okay to leave them behind in case of danger if they run away while carrying themselves. The girls won't do that they'll protect her until the end. She was happy to inform them that the frozen consumables on hand were several thousand dollars apiece. At this moment the fire salamander jumped up from the lava to the ground completely more than twice its normal size. The heroine first attacked with small ice magic but that level of attack had no effect on the fire salamander. The remaining two spread out on both sides interfering with it with frozen consumables and taking this opportunity to chant stance magic. The fire salamander sensed the danger and twisted its head towards her to crash. The heroine continued to chant the spell after dodging to avoid it. At this moment she was a bit regretful if it wasn't for Alice's relationship she wouldn't want to be in charge of someone else's family's debt. The flame attack in front of her was not at all like what the master said it was just average. Alice was injured by the flame wave just now but she believed that the heroine would be able to defeat her opponent. In order to protect the Gavin girls the heroine once again raised her spirit and after repelling the flame she told the girls to hide behind her. Finally she slammed the magic gathered in the palm of her hand at the source of the fire melt. Frozen air froze everywhere it passed. Though it was powerful she didn't feel too good about it. Normally the fire melt source should have frozen long ago. If the stalemate continued she would fail as her magic ran out. The heroine told the two to run away while they could. But how can they leave the heroine behind they will definitely accompany the heroine to fight to the end. Though she was touched the heroine was about to reach her limit. Suddenly the master's voice came to her mind. Your magic is still holding up let me see your backbone. As if encouraged the heroine directly erupted in a burst of attacks. With the crazy output of magic power in her body she finally turned the fire salamander into an ice sculpture. Alice wanted to go up and check the situation but for safety's sake Kate wanted to wait until the heroine recovered. Before falling asleep she saw the hilltop master watching. When the heroine woke up she used killing the fire salamander to gain material to help Alice pay off most of the family's debt. As a result the matter of getting Alice married was put to rest. On this day she receives a letter from the royal capital sent by the Fidelity Chamber of Commerce a store run by her parents. The shopkeeper had inquired from the orphanage director that she was here now and had written specifically in the hope that she would come back to inherit the family business. It had taken them seven years to get their business back on track since her parents had been killed and they hoped to have a chance to interview her. The heroine doesn't know what to make of the sudden news. She had thought the relationship had been severed a long time ago. At night she remembers the last time she saw her parents leaving the house and seems to feel something. The heroine catches up with her parents' carriage and says that she will keep an eye on the house until her parents return. The next day the heroine was going to make a trip out of the house. Loria was nervous about where she was going. The heroine said she was just going out for a walk and would be back soon. She was relieved. The heroine called her big sister to join her as she wandered around the village. She was in the village for half a year and the last time she was there it was her big sister who took her around to say hello. At first she thought the heroine was too young to be reliable but now she was like a little queen. The two came to the carpenter's store at which point the village chief asked his daughter to commission a carpenter and blacksmith to work together to build something. The village chief sees the village getting richer and richer and also generates motivation after all you can't just rely on the heroine alone to pull the whole village GDP. About the payment for investigating the hellfire grizzly stampede the village chief decided to add medicine fields next to the heroine store which should help her business the most. She was very touched and thought the payment was very thoughtful. Soon it's evening and the elder sister thinks it's really great that she can come to this village and the villagers have all become more energetic. The heroine suddenly states that she has an appointment to go to the Fidelity Chamber of Commerce. The girls are panicked but it's not as if she has the answers and this trip over is to find them. The round trip will take at least a month and in the meantime the heroine will need everyone's help to look after the store. After seven years the heroine returns to the Fidelity Chamber of Commerce and it's still laid out the same way it was seven years ago. The shopkeeper knows she must have thought she was abandoned. When his parents were killed by the mountain bandits they must have also been robbed of many of their goods causing the chamber to be saddled with an unprecedented amount of debt. While at one point they were planning to go their separate ways on this in the end they all decided that they would continue to run the store that had taken care of them so much. They had to entrust the young heroine to an orphanage so that she wouldn't have to see the plight she was in at the time. They kept it a secret from her until the chamber of commerce was back on track. The heroine did feel sad at first but then she thought of the possibility. This time she came over to see for herself how her parents' store was run. After several days of observation the heroine realized that it was really a great store. 
With her alchemy she could definitely make more people live happily ever after. The shopkeeper hoped that the store left behind by her parents and their passion for business would be inherited by the heroine. On the other hand Alice and the girls were very busy during the time the heroine was away. Andre spread the knowledge of alchemy that he had learned from the heroine widely leading to an influx of new gatherers in the store. The heroine was still hesitant to take over her parents' store at the moment, as she felt a great deal of pressure. While her parents hoped that she would be able to take over the family business, she was still skeptical. In the end the heroine decided to go to her master's store. Maria saw the heroine's appearance, and knew that she had come to see the master. The master wasn't surprised to see the heroine because in her mind it was only natural for a disciple to seek out the master. The master was also very surprised to learn of the heroine's reason for coming as she too had often heard rumors of the Fidelity Chamber of Commerce. Since the heroine felt hesitant the master suggested that she should have a sword fight first to relax her tight emotions. In the master's opinion the heroine was a very good disciple whether it was in swordsmanship, alchemy, or as a person. However she thought that the heroine was sometimes too good and might be bound by some formalism. Her parents had once told her that the purpose of the Chamber of Commerce was not just to make money but to make everyone live a happy life. Master felt that this everyone naturally included the heroine. She hoped that the heroine could abandon these bonds and make the decision that would make her happiest. On the other side of the alchemy store the girls also encountered a lot of problems many of which they were unable to solve. That is until the heroine shows up and helps the customers solve these problems. Instead of accepting her parents' store she reached an agreement with the Chamber of Commerce through a partnership. In the heroine's opinion her parents' store was great enough in their hands and her parents' long-held wish was realized. So she decides to go back to her alchemy store and run it with the girls and live happily ever after together. Well that's it for today's video. Thanks for your support, and watching well see you in the next installment.